One person was killed, four others hurt in an industrial incident at Vocker Kemi in Charleston. And it is a chilly start this Saturday morning, but those cold temperatures aren't going to be lasting all weekend long. Your weekend planner is coming up. President-elect Joe Biden increased his electoral college votes, winning Arizona and an apparent winner in Georgia. Coverage you can count on. Channel 3 Eyewitness News Weekend Today. Good morning, Tennessee Valley, and thank you for waking up with us on Eyewitness News Weekend Today. I'm Michelle Heron, joined by meteorologist Allison Pryor for a look at your weather. Good morning, Allison. Good morning, Michelle. You know, starting off this weekend, it is cold. You're going to want to grab those jackets. We have lots of places that are in the 30s, but these temperatures are certainly not going to be lasting all day. In fact, we're looking at above normal temperatures for our afternoon highs. So Chattanooga, Altamont, the two places hanging on with those 40 degree temperatures everywhere else in the 30s this morning, 39 from Dalton to 36 in Cleveland. We have calm wind at this time, but your three key weather takeaways for this weekend. Generally, we're talking about a sunny Saturday. Just a few clouds here and there. We'll see cloud cover increasing overnight ahead of our number two takeaway, which is some showers on Sunday. It's not going to be a complete washout. We are expecting some showers to move through. And then number three, great fall temperatures all weekend long. So yes, it's cold this morning, but our afternoons and even tomorrow morning, we're going to have really pleasant temperatures. So let's break that week end down a little bit more in detail. So for the day today, 70 for your high, so that is the above normal high temperature. Really a beautiful day. You can get outside, go on a hike, walk around the park, go to the golf course, whatever. Do it today. It's going to be beautiful. Lots of sunshine, just a few clouds here and there. Then on Sunday, I mentioned those showers. It's at 60%, so not everybody's going to be seeing them. But look at this. Showers will be ending at noon, so that means the rest of your day will be nicer on Sunday. 66 for that high. I'll time out those rain showers for the Sunday morning coming up in about 15 more minutes. Michelle? Thank you so much, Allison. Well, new details have been released about an incident at the Vocker Kemi plant in Bradley County yesterday. Five people were taken to the hospital. One of them has been released. Another did not survive their injuries. A representative with Vocker Kemi in Charleston calls it an industrial incident. Three people are still being treated at local hospitals. The vice president of Walker says one contractor died from their injuries. Another was treated and released. The environment and community surrounding the plant were not impacted, but neighbors nearby say it was too close for comfort. I just was praying that no one would be seriously hurt and the place wouldn't explode and annihilate all of us. The Valker site was forced to pay thousands of dollars in fines after a broken cylinder led to the release of hydrogen catching fire in 2017. The investigation into this latest incident is ongoing. Turning now to facts, not fear coverage. The Hamilton County Health Department reported 203 new COVID-19 cases yesterday and two more deaths. This is the fourth day the rise has been over 200, with the record of 260 hit on Tuesday of this week. The state of Tennessee also surpassed 300,000 COVID cases this week. You can take a look at the case numbers for all of the counties across the Channel 3 viewing area inside our website and app. The Hamilton County Health Department also announced a potential COVID-19 exposure at the Chattanooga Cigar Club last week. The person was in the infectious period and and at the lounge the night of November 7th from 1030 until 2 in the morning. Anyone who believes they may have come into contact is asked to monitor their symptoms and get tested. You can get a free test every day at the Alston plant from 830 until 1. A Tennessee state representative has filed legislation designed to scale back the power of the six metropolitan health departments in Tennessee. Currently, the health department is made up of unelected members that have the authority to issue health directives independent from the state. Under House Bill 7, any county health director, health officer, or board of health member could move to an advisory role. Elected county mayors would have the final authority to establish and implement policies in response to health emergencies in the county. This legislation is supported by members of the House Republican leadership, including House Speaker Cameron Sexton. 
a lot of people say that we need to listen to the scientists or the health experts, um, which is fine. You do listen. It doesn't mean that they make the decision. The mayor should make the final decision. Hamilton County Mayor Jim Coppinger says the legislation would not change how things are done here, but maybe so in other counties. We consult with one another uh, before any decisions are made and always have, and that would continue um, even if there was a reversal in the role about it being the responsibility of the county mayor. The legislative session for 2021 begins on January 12th. Time is now 6.05. The annual Chickamauga Marathon, Half Marathon, and Junior Marathons were all canceled earlier this year, but there's still one race going on today. Channel 3's Angela Kim is live in Fort Oglethorpe this morning. Good morning, Angela. Good morning, Michelle. Yeah, the race that's still going on today is the Fort Oglethorpe 5K, and it actually is beginning here and also ending here at the 6th Cavalry Museum, and also the race is benefiting this museum as well. Now, as you can see behind me, there are volunteers here already getting people ready. The runners haven't arrived yet. The race doesn't start until 8.30 a.m., but there are still people heading in already, getting ready to lace up their sneakers and get out on the track. Now, there are some COVID precautions this, this year as well. People are required to wear a mask until the race begins and they can take it off as they start to run and social distancing while running is also recommended. There's also not going to be an award ceremony this year because of the, the pandemic. So there are definitely some changes here too. And we're going to be talking to the race director, the executive director for the museum behind me that this race is benefiting today, as well as someone participating in the race as well. So we're going to talk to a lot of fun people in just a bit. But for now, Michelle, I'll toss it back to you. Reporting in Fort Oglethorpe, Angela Kim, Channel 3 Eyewitness News. Making the best of what they have. Thank you, Angela. When we come back on Eyewitness News Weekend today, President-elect Joe Biden picks flipped two more states as he increased his electoral lead. Plus, we'll hear from President Trump, who addresses the nation for the first time since Biden became the projected winner of the general election.